become a pro in static equipment design, join our in-depth and professional training. To avail the biggest discounts and explore the various courses, click on the link shared in the description just below the video. Register and check out the different courses to become an expert in static equipment design. So this is a typical lifting arrangement for horizontal vessel. You can see over here, there is a saddle. This is a horizontal vessel with saddle and there are lifting lugs. Okay. So the lifting lugs uh, depends uh, upon the amount of weight it is going to lift. We can provide either two lifting lugs like this. You can see over here, this is a lifting lug, right? So there are only two lifting lugs, one over here, one over here. And we can uh, lift this with the help of single point lifting only one crane. So one belt will come from here, one another belt will come from here. There will be a hook and there will be a crane. So what will happen? There is, this is called as a single point lifting. This is called as a single point lifting. We can either use a spreader beam also. You can see over here spreader beam. So if there is a beam has been used, then here from the straight component come, here from the straight component come, and it will be lifted like this. So you can use spreader beam, you, uh, you uh, can uh, uh, lift the equipment without spreader beam. What effect does that will have on your lifting arrangement or the stresses that also we are going to see. So when there is a spreader beam, we can see that there is only vertical reaction which is coming into the picture. But if it is a single point lifting like this, then at the time of designing, we have to resolve this force in two components. One is the horizontal component and another is a vertical component. So because of the single point lifting, vertical component will definitely there. In addition to that, the horizontal component will also there. With the help of spreader beam, there will be only this vertical component. There won't be any horizontal component unless and until there is some angle over it. So one component will be reduced and hence the stresses or the bending moments caused by that component will also be reduced. So the combined stresses will be reduced if we are using spreader beam. So here there are two types of arrangement. You can have the lifting lugs like this with spreader beam or without spreader beam. Here you can see the same arrangement over here, but this is without spreader beam. This is single point lifting. So here is one single point lifting over here and another single point lifting over here. So this is a typical arrangement for lifting of that equipment. So let's come over here. So WE is nothing but the weight of that particular component. WE is nothing but the weight of that component. So these are nothing but the lifting lugs, perpendicular lifting lugs typically we will be used. This is the lifting angle with reference to the horizontal. It can, uh, it is usually shown in case of vertical. That is uh, the half apex angle or the full apex angle is 30 to 60, uh, 45 degrees usually preferred. Lesser the angle, lesser will be the normal forces or we can say uh, the forces along the axis will be come into the picture. Theta is nothing but the sling angle. PL, this is representing PL. Actually, there will be a belt or rope like this. So PL is the load acting on the sling. That belt or the rope or chain is called as a sling. So PL is nothing but the load which is acting on that sling. And this is nothing but the weight of the equipment, which we assume to be concentrated at the center of gravity. So this point represents the CG of that vessel and WE is the weight. So if the vessel is having the same geometry, uh, equilateral geometry, or we can say symmetric geometry. So the saddles are placed at an equidistance from this CG. Then what will happen? The entire load, WE is let's say the total load. So half load will be coming as a vertical reaction over here and half load will come as a vertical uh, reaction over here. So in this lifting lug, we can say this P, if we are using single point of lifting, so this will be equal to WE because under uh, equilibrium of forces, your all vertical forces have to be balanced. So WE is downward, so P is vertically upward, so P will be equal to WE, which is nothing but the CG. But this P is not uh, this will be distributed for this lifting lug and this lifting lug. And for this lifting lug, the vertical reaction will be how much? Let's say again in the equilibrium condition, the forces must be balanced. So the downward forces and these upward forces will be balanced. 
so whatever load is there if these lifting lugs are equidistant from this cg so half load will come over here and half load will come over here so this load will be equal to how much this vertical reaction will be equal to how much w e by 2 w e by 2 that is weight by 2 will be the vertical reaction over there and then we can uh, calculate the component which is uh, acting over here and that component will be calculated with the help of this vertical component that is nothing but w e by 2 which is nothing but 0.5 times of w divided by sin theta will give us by using the trigonometry the vertical is known to us that is w e by 2 that is nothing but 0.5 times of w or w e and this reaction will be calculated as sin theta is equal to vertical reaction divided by this hypotenuse so the hypotenuse is nothing but the pl that is a sling force so pl will be equal to 0.5 into w that is w e by 2 divided by sin theta so by this formula we can calculate the sling reaction so this sling reaction people usually what does they will take half as this w e by 2 they will take as a sling reaction which is absolutely wrong because under equilibrium of forces the vertical reaction have to be balanced so this vertical reaction will be w e by 2 and this sling reaction will be w e by 2 that is 0.5 times of w e divided by sin of this angle theta so that this is how we have to calculate this pl so let's understand what are the other type of lifting lugs how they will be placed so here we can see one equipment here there are four lifting lugs two on this side and two on the other side of that equipment so now these are not perpendicular lifting lugs these are the radial lifting lugs you can see from here so if i extend the axis it will touches to the center of my equipment so these are nothing but the radial lifting lugs so if these type of lifting lugs are there and i want to analyze those and i want to calculate the thickness of those lifting lugs then how to resolve the forces that is very very important so let's say w is nothing but the weight of that equipment and there are four lifting lugs two on this side and two on another side and let's assume that all are at equidistant from the cg so what will happen this vertical reaction will be divided in the four vertical reaction each will be coming at each lifting lug so you can see over here this is downward and this is upward so the upward reaction will be having the value of w by 4 because there are total four lifting lugs isn't it so whether this will be the uh, tensile force for that lifting lug no if we just observe that though it is vertical but that is not vertical with reference to the axis of this lifting lug is it no it is in the third quadrant we would say this is first or this will be in the second quadrant so if i put this lifting lug like this so this w l uh, w by 4 will be coming in this quadrant so is it perpendicular no so because of this w4 we have to resolve the forces in line with the axis of this lifting lug and perpendicular to the axis of the lifting lug so one will be w by 4 into cos theta that will be along the horizontal uh, direction and one will be the vertical direction that will be w by 4 into sin theta w by 4 into sin theta so please do remember though w by 4 is a vertical reaction but that is not the vertical reaction along the axis of the lifting lug so again that w by 4 we have to resolve to calculate the forces which will be coming in the vertical and horizontal direction so this is very very important to resolve the forces <clears throat> now let's take one example so let's say we'll be having one equipment that equipment is having one shell two distance and it is uh, equidistant or we can say symmetric geometry so its cg will be exactly at the center and the weight of that component or that total equipment is 2000 kg how much 2000 kg now there is one lifting lug over here and another lifting lug over here so what will be the forces and how to resolve those forces as we know that under equilibrium of forces the vertical reactions will be balanced so one force will be in downward direction so one will be in upward direction on this side another will be upward direction on this side and that will be half of this because it is equidistant from this so the vertical reaction will be how much w by 2 that is half of this and here also it will be w by 2 which is 2000 by 2 so it will be 1000 kg so 1000 kg is a vertical reaction and from that we have to calculate the horizontal reaction f so how to calculate f f will be is equal to w by 2 divided by sin 30 this is the 30 and let's say this is nothing but coming over here 
तो साइन थर्टी इज वॉट डब्ल्यू बाय टू डिवाइड बाय एफ डब्ल्यू बाय टू डिवाइड बाय एफ एंड इफ आई वॉन्ट टू कैलकुलेट द एफ देन एफ विल बी इज इक्वल टू डब्ल्यू बाय टू डिवाइड बाय साइन थर्टी तो डब्ल्यू बाय टू डिवाइड बाय साइन थर्टी दिस इज हाउ आई एम गोइंग टू कैलकुलेट द वैल्यू ऑफ द फोर्स एफ एंड वंस द एफ इज नोन टू मी एफ कॉस थीटा विल गिव मी दॉर्जेंटल so w by 2 divided by sin 30 into cos 30 will be the reaction which will be in horizontal direction so f cos 30 is nothing but 1732 1732 one, so w by 2 divided by sin theta is nothing but 2000 kg so the value of f will be how much 2000 kg and f cos theta will be 1732 1732 so f will be is equal to how much 2000 And 2000 cos theta is 1732. So please do remember. So though 1000 kg was the vertical load, but because of the angle theta, the if the angle theta is 30 degree, this is 30 means this angle is how much 60 degree. This is 90. This is 60. 60. 60. 120. So if this lifting angle is 120 in between this and this angle theta is equal to 30 degree, then this reaction force because If this is how much 120 and this is 30 means it is inclined more towards the horizontal. So naturally the horizontal reaction will be more at 45 degree. Both these reactions will be equal. And if the angle theta is more than 45 and if it is close to 90 degree, then the vertical reaction will be more and the horizontal reaction will be less. As it is 30 degree less than 45, so we can see that from here the value of horizontal force is more than the value of vertical force. Vertical is W by 2, which is 1000, and horizontal is F cos theta. F is 2000. 2000 into cos theta, uh, 30 will be 1732 kg. So 1732 will be the horizontal reaction.